This uh, this uh, threefold uh -huh. right is threefold. Each of these rights are threefold. One is property mm -hmm. of possession mm -hmm. and of possibility. Pooh. <laughs> then we have the insane delusion, yes, of a court commissioner mm -hmm. that is completely irrational that you would ever allow a petitioner to motion a court. Irrational delusional mm -hmm. on the part of Brent based in right now you are absolutely delusional in your belief yeah, of the imaginary state of facts when the truth are mm -hmm. the fact is yes that my wife actually motioned the court for default dissolution of marriage when when I had personally documented that I had responded mm -hmm. And for you to allow that to happen without removing everything, you allowed a criminal to, uh, well, really cause you to believe, persistent belief, in some imaginary state of facts. Mm. Now, there's a possibility, Brent, okay, <laughs> that you could get sued, yes, for giving custody of my sons to my wife without any proof of service after you allowed the petitioner, yes, to continue with the dissolution of marriage. When you knowingly allowed for her to contempt court. Now, this property possession and possibility, mm -hmm. I would take it back to, oh, 2011, yeah, uh, 2012, yes. Why would any judge continue to hear the motion for dissolution of marriage when you yourself had found that it was a contempt of court? Oh, you're delusional. Mm -hmm. You're believing in imaginary state of facts, yes, that I'm a domestic abuser as the father and the husband, yeah, and your thought was, well, I know it's, it's against the law, but we have to do it. We have to do it because it violates the laws of the United States. Now, I found the experience of Clallam County is we have to do it because it violates the law. There should never be a judge mm -hmm, that would hear mm -hmm, any more of a dissolution of marriage if any petitioner was told, you do understand that the respondent responded within the amount of time that the law allows for. Now we have oops, oh, oh, the form of taking an off an oath, yes, differs in words, yet agrees in meaning. Mm. Let's say you're the Mormon president. You're sworn in as uh, the appointed uh, county court commissioner, and your god is the angel moron. I put. Mm. And you decide to invoke, yes, because it was in the newspaper. Right, that you were appointed the president of a local Mormon denomination. Yes, the Latter-day Saints. Yes, and I would expect, right, that the deity that you would invoke would be the Mormon deity of Moroni. Now, let's say your deity mm -hmm. doesn't like my deity, coach. And we're going to have a little spiritual argument between the two of us about what the law says. <laughs> now, why don't you call Moroni right now, you piece of shit? These deities, they have a lot to do with what you think as an oath of office. Moroni, the angel of Mormonism. I do not believe that Mormonism is a true religion. It's just as much as you dislike that thought that you could be leaving something that is false. Yes, 
It's the same insane delusional, the irrational, pollution, persistent belief. Yes. In your imaginary state of facts mm -hmm, that you had every legal right to do every crime that you've committed. Now, I know, Brent, you're a Mormon, and I do not believe your religion. Does that upset you? Does it upset you that I think your deity is a lying deity? <laughs> 